It's time to cancel everything. We'll be forced to close restaurants. Additional restrictions across the board. 100% of the workforce uh, must stay home. Stay home. Stay at home. With the coronavirus sweeping through the nation, many businesses have been forced to shut down. Restaurants were among the hardest hit, and without sufficient aid, more than 10,000 restaurateurs had to close their kitchens for good. At its peak, unemployment reached nearly 15%, schools were shut down, and without access to school meals, an estimated 14 million children became food insecure. One analysis found that in 2020, food insecurity more than tripled among households with children to 29.5%. The co-founder of a popular steakhouse chain has sidestepped partisan gridlock and come up with a creative solution called Feed the Fridge that keeps restaurants open and the hungry fed at the same time. My name is Mark Buecher. I'm the co-founder of Medium Rare Restaurants. Food insecurity has always been a big issue. I think now it's become a more visible issue as we're really seeing the people that were affected by it. Feed the Fridge allows restaurants to sell food into refrigerators. It's gonna be given away through fundraising and through donations. So we allow restaurants to stay busy, manufacture food, and uh, we allow people to benefit from free food as well. Restaurants are in trouble. DC restaurants are in real trouble. The hospitality business is in real trouble. This is a program that solves that problem. I hope the Feed the Fridge project saves restaurants. I think the restaurant business will forever be different. Um, it's never the same. We're here on a, on a Thursday night and this restaurant usually is on an hour wait and um, we have more meals going out via deliveries than we have people dining in. The stories in the news that you see of the 30,000 cars lined up for to get meals at food banks is not the story. That's the solution. The story is the people that can't get there. The story is the school kids that don't have transportation to go to a school to pick up their lunch because their parents don't have a car or their family car is with a parent at work, or the elderly who have been locked in who are scared to death to go out that don't drive, that can't drive, and that don't want to tell their kids or their family that they're hungry because they don't want anyone to worry. That's the story. Here's how the system works. Refrigerators are installed throughout the city. Then, through donations, the restaurants involved are able to make enough food to stock the refrigerators each day. People who need the food can then, without registration or sign-ups, go take what they need to feed themselves and their families. We have plenty of neighbors who are shut in that nice could you. Use, use this program. And, uh, with, my, with my friends here and um, my seniors here, they know plenty of people who could use this program. Good. The more the better. So thank you so very much. We promise we won't stop. Thank you. Okay. It's thank a wonderful, you. wonderful idea. Stay safe and healthy, everybody. The system currently runs on donations, but Mark has his sights set on nationwide expansion. I think I've solved the problem. Now it needs to catch on, and I need people to copy me across the country, and I need the government to fund it. Uh, the government's great with money, and sometimes they're great with programs. They're not great with food programs. If a kid goes through a lunch line and they have a negative balance, they get two pieces of white bread, one piece of processed cheese, uh, an apple, and a, and a pint of milk. That's the poor kid's lunch, a dollar nine. That's paid for by the USDA. Dignified school lunches shouldn't even be a topic of conversation in the United States of America. When a child goes through a school lunch line and doesn't have money on their account, they're either gonna get the poor kid's lunch or they're gonna choose to not even walk through the line and not go through the ridicule by their friends. The data shows that kids that eat one square meal a day have a 70% better aptitude for mathematics. It's one meal. If you want food that tastes good, 
that is prepared well, you come to me. You come to restaurants to do it. A government agency does not know how to cook food or prepare food. Let us provide meals where the people are. Let people come into our restaurants with vouchers to pay for meals. We have a ask no questions policy for the meals because I don't want people to be shamed into getting the meals. Parents feel bad they can't provide for their children already. To have them have to ask, hey, can I take four meals for my kids, adds another layer of shame, I think, to the program. I'd rather them just grab the meals, have a nice day, and go home. That's the point of dignity. Their currency is the smile on their face. Grab as many meals as you need. Enjoy yourselves, stay healthy. Come back tomorrow, we'll have more. Every dollar we raise goes to food. There is no administrative cost. We don't rent office space. I don't have custom printed apparel. We are putting everything we raise into buying meals from restaurants to keep them alive, to feed the people in the city that need the food desperately. We want people that can and that are willing to give help us do good. If you'd like to make a tax deductible donation, or if you're a restaurant owner who would like to get involved in the program, visit feedthefridge.org.